everyone, and welcome to Big Ideas Growing Minds. We are so happy you are here. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Your support means the world to us. Today's big idea comes from Susan Cain and her thought-provoking and inspiring book, Quiet. The book has the subtitle, The Power of Introverts in a World that Can't Stop Talking, and is, in its essence, a reflection on how many modern societies discourages introverted behavior and why Kane believes this is a dang shame. Throughout the book, Kane celebrates the qualities of inner strength and resilience that introverts possess, offers fantastic insights into how different personalities are hardwired, address the problems faced every day by introverts, and shows us how to overcome them. Let's walk you through the key insights from the book. Key insight number one, introverts versus extroverts. According to Kane, our lives are highly impacted by where we fall on the introvert-extrovert spectrum, a preference both defined by our very nature and by our external influences in the form of cultural preferences and personal experiences. There are many differences between extroverts and introverts. As a general rule, most extroverts would rather talk than listen, they relish company, and their outgoing, vibrant nature draws people to them. They are quick to start on work tasks, enjoy multitasking, and are attracted to wealth and fame. On the other hand, introverts tend to be more reserved and less motivated by fame and fortune. They may be social and enjoy parties, but often prefer spending quality time with friends or family. They usually have heightened sensitivity and genuine empathy. With that said, it is important to emphasize that the human personality is highly complex. All introverts or extroverts are not alike, and there is a broad spectrum within each personality type. Number two, why society favors extroverts. In the 1920s and 1930s, as corporate America flourished, people's fascination with movie stars grew, and the influence of advertisements became stronger, and so began the shift from a strong societal focus on character to an even stronger focus on personality. This shift brought with it a culture where people assessed each other more on their personality than their morals. Self-help guides abandon topics of how to cultivate good values and mold your character and instead began focusing on how to speak more powerfully, how to act more confidently, and how to behave to impress. Great power came from having a great personality, and your demeanor and reputation immensely affected your success, both in society and business. Society started valuing extrovertism as the preferred personality trait. People who talked a lot were considered more intelligent, capable, attractive, and interesting. Extroversion was encouraged from a young age putting pressure on naturally introverted kids to go against their inherent personality and become pseudo-extroverts. Number three, why society needs to stop underestimating introverts. Now that we have learned how the glorification of extroversion came about, Susan Cain emphasizes why it's entirely unreasonable. She points out that some of the greatest minds within arts, politics, entrepreneurship, and science belong to introverts and emphasize introversion strengths and unique qualities. Qualities such as persistence, heightened sensitivity, and empathy. She also highlights that introverts make great leaders because of their predisposition to listen and their openness to carry out the suggestions of others. After establishing the strengths of introversion, she highlights which barriers we need to break down for introverts to realize their full potential. Office decoration. Open office designs have become popular and commonplace in today's work environments. Their objective is to foster better collaboration among employees for improved productivity and performance, which is perfectly reasonable. However, companies overlook that some employees, most of them introverts, produce better work when sitting in a private, undisturbed space. Brainstorming is a prevalent and praised practice in the corporate world. The problem is, it mostly works for extroverts who feel confident interacting and taking risks in group settings. 
Empirical data suggests that brainstorming not only stifles introverts, but also prevents great ideas from coming to the forefront, since many people are afraid to speak up in public. Teamwork. Most modern schools, companies, and public institutions believe that teamwork are the most critical building blocks of success. However, research suggests that working in solitude increases the ratio of innovative ideas. Of course, Susan Cain is not implying that a collaborative approach is not at all effective. She simply suggests that the collaboration must be adjusted to cater to both extroverts and introverts. Let's end with this quote. The secret to life is to put yourself in the right lighting. For some, it's a Broadway spotlight. For others, a lamplit desk. Use your natural powers of persistence, concentration, and insight to do work you love and work that matters. Solve problems, make art, think deeply. And there you have it. Quiet by Susan Kane in a nutshell. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to give it a like. Take care and see you soon.